All right. Michael? Uh, yeah, I mean, after watching the film, is there anything that changed about what you thought yesterday? No. No. They, uh, they got up on us, uh, played right to their strengths. We didn't, we didn't respond well, and we got an avalanche in the second quarter, and we deserved to get beat like that. We didn't play well enough, didn't coach well enough, and but the good news is we're playing Thursday, and we got to move on to New England. Same reason I took Matt out once we realized we got to play Thursday night. We were mathematically after the you know first couple of sessions. CP, you know, he wanted to go back in there, but then we'll have to see throughout the week. But at that point, you got to make the best decisions for your team. When you come out the first drive of the second half, um, you know, two drops, come back the next one, get something going, we get picked, and then uh, we get hit and picked again. I wasn't going to keep the quarterback in there. We could, we could go up there and we could stack grab at the end, but that's not smart for this football team and the rest of the season. As far as he, did he get hurt, injured at all? We got a lot of guys that are just nicked up, and I made the decision. It's, it's in the middle of the season, Michael. You know, so I had to make the best decision, play, see, you know, see who's going to fight through it and get ready to go for Thursday night. I know you spoke last week um, about Matt Ryan's subtly, like, subtly reinventing himself, and I, I, I was just kind of, Curious, when what are kind of some ways that you saw him do that for you over the course of the last six, seven months, however long it's been? Well, I think any time. I mean, he's a guy throughout his career. I think I've gone on record before. It's pretty impressive. I mean, he hasn't been in the same system. A lot of times you see the same quarterback, head coach, offensive system slash coordinator, however you want to look at it. And Matt's played in a bunch of different systems, been successful in all of them, and. Um, you know, we've asked him there's certain things that we do that he hadn't done before. Maybe it's been a couple of years or whatnot, but uh, he's willing. You know, he's not set in his ways for a guy that's, that's played as long as he has and had as much success as he's had. How much uh, dialogue do you have with Matt in game? Because I know when we were talking to you after the Saints game, you were talking about, like, when you made this decision to go back to CP in the fourth quarter with the same play that you ran in the first. What kind of – how often is that happening with you guys? A lot. And a lot of times it doesn't necessarily have to be over there. That's a good thing about the headset. I can I can talk through them through Charles London. I can go over there and say, hey, make sure we, we go over this so so I can still have my eyes on the field. Or sometimes I feel the need to go back there and look at a picture on the surface. I've got a lot of – there's there's constant communication. Are there the head coach as opposed to an OC D to kind of pay more attention to how a whole group of team is mentally, not just after a loss, but just, you know, in general – yeah, you do. And, uh, you know, that's the thing is you look at a game like yesterday, and that's a, we said it all week, that's a really talented football team. I wasn't blowing smoke. We knew we had to play well. We got down on them, and that's how they, they won a lot of games this year because it's a really good good team. And uh, we got down. You know, like I said, I, I got probably too aggressive, you know, fourth down, but felt we needed to make a play. And, you know, obviously in hindsight, the end of the result, it was what it was, but – it's everything, Jeff. You know, offense, defense, special teams, how we prepared last week. You got to look at it all, you know, why, why that happens. I mean, you have lulls during the NFL season. You don't want to put that, that crap out there, and we, and we did. And it's – we got to fix it, and that's, that's the bottom line, and we will. Are you, do you think the temperature of guys like today in the team meeting at all? Or? You do that every day, you know, and that's, that's your – going through it. And I always think this, I think when you, you, you have games like that, you find out a lot about players and coaches. And, you know, we've, the way we started the season wasn't ideal. We fought back, and here we are. We're kind of right in the, the mush right here. So we'll see how we come out of it in November. Because yeah, we, we got to gotta turn the page quick. You need to do anyways, but especially when you have a short week. I mean, we know we have a great challenge coming in here in New England. And kind of along the lines, too, in our rest of stuff. But you've got, you got not just this week, but you've got a lot of tough games in the second half of the season. Yeah, every game's tough. But yes, I mean, okay. yeah, you're right. Will a lot of decisions, will you be really be watching closely? Will a lot of decisions be made, you and Terry personnel, based on kind of, you know, not just winning and losing, but how guys respond in games like this the rest of the year? Sure, because you got to find out about people. Uh, I've always said this you don't know somebody in this business, whether you have friends you may know, you know, coaches or, you know, the players and, Spring and training camp don't really give you a good picture. There's really not the pressure. I mean, there's 
pressure to make the roster, but they're, they're different pressure during the season. But I, I, until you've gone through a season with, with players and coaches, you really don't know. And that's how I've always felt. There's guys who have reputations that may be great, you know, and they've done a good job uh, pumping themselves up, players or coaches, but until you get into the thick of it, and every, every season you're going to have adversity. I mean, there's one, you know, maybe one team a year that everything goes their way, and great, but uh, you're going to face adversity. And so you find out a lot about yourself and players and other coaches. How does this week kind of change, like, process-wise? I mean, I, I just, obviously everything gets sped up, but is there anything that you kind of do differently with a Thursday night game and having sure. a quick turnaround? Yeah, you have to. So and everybody's got different ways they do it. I've done it a lot of different ways. I've been on a lot of different staffs. I think it's the advantage of working a lot of different head coaches. You, you just haven't seen one way to do it. Uh, so you try to make the best decision. How you doing, bud? Try to make the best decision, you know, based on your experiences, where your team's at, uh, what point of the season the game falls. So, you know, we we gotta get ready to go for Thursday because it's a it's a big game and and ho hopefully we can it's it's a good thing to play Thursday when you play a game like that you want to move on as quick as possible. So I'm kind of glad we're playing Thursday. How do you deal with adversity? What's that? How do you deal with adversity? Uh, like, like I said, you know, we're all human, but I. I I can't continue to say you have to look at it objectively. The same thing when the games you win. No different than coming off the New Orleans win. You, you can't get too overly excited. Like, it's, it's such a long grind in a, in a process. And like I said, as soon as you – and I, I don't I, – I, I say neutral, I say objective, but you see it week after week. You, know, you look around the league and it's a humbling game. And that's what I love about it. So – I, you know, the biggest answer to answer your question, Jeff, though, I try to remain as objective as I can and you fight human emotion because we're all human and, you know, you get you may get angry about things or you may whatever, but you try to stay disciplined to be objective. How do you, how do you actually process it? Like, how did you learn that? How did you, how did you just experience you? watching and just trying to get to know yourself and, you know, that's the thing about this this job, but it will test you and you want it. Like, don't sign up for it if you don't. I always say that. Like, I always laugh when guys get up here and, yeah, you get you get your butt kicked like that yesterday, and guys sit there and what was me? I want to blame everybody else. No, it starts with me, and that's what you want. You want to be tested, and that's what I enjoy. I'm thankful for this opportunity to be up here. Anything else? Do you yeah, yeah, coach. I, I was just wondering how intense was the film review of this, and you know, with the with the uh, next game coming up so quick, how that the film review? Well, you always got a challenge on a short week. You know, because you, you can't sit there and linger. You don't want any loss, and you really don't want any win to linger either. Um, so quick, you know, I mean, it's, you know, going in, how, you know, everybody got their process, how you want to prepare for Thursday night, but you got to move on fast. How, how far ahead did you, I mean, I'm going to rephrase this. How much, when did you start? I'm not going to go in the process. No. I know what you're asking. It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 all right, I'm curious what do you think I'm going to ask. Let's see. How far ahead? When did you start on New England? Or, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, because you're talking about it obviously being so condensed and quick. So do you have, like, an, are there advanced people that you have to do that? I'm not going to go over our process. <laughs> the other one, the thing I had was the, <clears throat> what was the evaluation of the passing game and uh, how you make adjustments moving forward? You can always make adjustments. Quick evaluation, not good. So, we, like I said, I mean, you got like, you got to win versus man coverage. Credit to Dallas. We didn't do that yesterday. Game got a, got away from us. You start the first two drives, you only come away with three points. Credit to them. Next two drives were were bad, and um, and then you know you get in the third quarter. We don't execute well. And that's that was disappointing. And then you got to make the best decision for a team. So that's what we did. The rushing yards late. How much stock is still in those? You just want to see who's going to, going to compete. So that's all we're looking to do right there. You, you realize mathematically there wasn't enough possessions left in the game. And so you wanted to make sure, see who's going to, see what these guys are about. And so at least there was something there. Were, were there specific guys who impressed you in, in, that, in that period? Well, I think you just, they confirmed what I've thought about them. You mentioned yesterday that maybe one, one thing that brought me the most was kind of extracurriculars right at the end and having your guys. What what do you say to your guys about that? And kind of how do you kind of basically say, listen, 
Well, I, it's BS, really. I mean, you got beat. I mean, what what does that do? You know, I mean, it's like the guy you're 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 getting blown out in a basketball game and to foul somebody hard. I mean, what is that? that doesn't prove anything. So I get it. They're prideful guys. It's it's pro football, but it's just stupid. They're they're in kneel down. They got us. Move on. That's that that's really what the message with Michael. Facing Belichick, I mean, obviously you never worked under him, but were there things that you watched from afar that yeah. kind of stood out to you that you're like, oh wow, I took this or I, I was impressed by that? Well, I think the thing that obviously there's, we'll all strive to to reach the record he's got for Super Bowls. I mean, you you know, he's somebody that's done it at a high level for a long time with a lot of different styles of team. I think the one thing they don't get enough credit for is how physical they are. You know, even though those runs, I mean, you watch them play right now and they're doing a heck of a job. They're as physical as any team. And if you go back and, and look at the defenses he coached with the New York Giants to how they built that Cleveland team, they're big physical teams. That's one thing nobody's ever given enough credit for. And they're physical as hell. And that's how they played in that kind of environment in, in the AFC East. You play a lot of cold games. They got a big physical team. And that's what they've done this year. They're playing really efficient on offense. They're asking the quarterback, he's going to make the right reform. And they're playing really well as a team. They got it went out, spent a lot of money in free agency. They got a really talented defense. They're physical. They're going to jam you. They're going to. It's going to be a, a good pro football game, and that's why they're they're. You can see, and most of his teams have, they improve as the season goes on, and that's what they're doing right now. Go back to that question again. Uh, Matt Jones being arguably the best rookie quarterback in this draft class. I'm not in the, uh, I'm not a hot take guy. No, no, I'm just like in his, your evaluation of him. Uh, you, you've already faced a rookie quarterback this season, Zach Wilson. Uh, is there anything about him that you know, is abnormal for a rookie quarterback? If we're, if we're going to write rookie narratives right now, you go ahead and put in that freezing cold take. Then so we can all look at this in two years. I've seen it. See the guys that had the good seven game stretch and they want to put them in Canton. And then the other guys end up emerging later on, or you get guys that don't look well, you don't look right early on. I think Peyton Manning set the rookie interception record. So you'd love to go back and look at those takes from the Indianapolis Star, whatever his rookie year was. Um, I, think he's a, I think he's a good player, and he's doing a good job for him. What's impressed you about his play, especially over the last few weeks and now in the swing of the season? Kind of how he played at Alabama. He's smart, he's efficient, he's doing a really good job for him. Tell he's doing what they're asking him to do. Anything else? Thanks, Thank you.